a lot of my academic career, a lot of my research has been involved in how does management work differently in different countries around the world. And as part of that, one of the things I've been very interested in is what, happen, what happens in the global economy, because that, that's the context for it all. Um, and the world has gone through a series of waves of globalization, going right back to Roman times, in fact, even before. Um, and in between these waves of globalization, we've seen retreats from, from world trade. And uh, of course, one of the things to bear in mind is that technology has been part of that all the way through. You know? So in the Roman days, you know, what was one of the technologies that made an enormous difference to world trade was the Roman road. Um, it, going to medieval times, we saw the invention of banking systems and various kinds of financial instruments that allowed people to, to trade at a distance um, securely. Um, so that made an enormous amount of difference to, to world trade. In more recent times, of course, um, since, uh, since, since just after the Second World War, we've seen exponential increases in the level of world trade. There was a, a, something of a blip around the 2008 financial crisis, but it really was just that, mostly a blip. Um, and again, uh, technology really implicated in that. Most recently, of course, the rise of the internet, the World Wide Web, and everything that's come with that. And th that's made a big difference to uh, globalization in a number of different ways. So first of all, it means that um, that kind of communication at a diff distance and the immediacy of, of contact between different parts of the world and the ability to move large amounts of data around means that, for example, uh, global supply chains become a, 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 a real possibility in ways that they weren't before. It means that there are new kinds of goods being traded. So, for example, uh, di digital goods of all kinds. Just one very good example of that would be the media industry. You know, we've all got used to buying films online, for example, buying music online, uh, but information as a good is being traded in all sorts of ways. Now, what, what's been the impact of all of that? Well, uh, of course, what we've seen over the period is that uh, globalization and the technological change that's been woven through that has uh, overall made very significant increases in global wealth. It, in many cases, the uh, the wealth gap between richer and poorer nations have, has narrowed considerably in recent years. So on the whole, you'd have to say that's a good thing, but there's a dark side to it too. Because at the same time, what we've seen is we've seen very significant increases in inequality between individuals. Um, we've seen um, uh, the impacts of globalization uh, on the environment. Uh, you know, a lot of climate change impacts have come from, uh, uh, from globalization. Uh, we've also seen um, social harm uh, of various kinds. You know, so uh, why, exploitation of uh, people on low wages in one part of the world to benefit another part of the world, for example. And it, in recent years, I think uh, it's clear that we've also seen some kickback against that. Because of these levels of inequality, uh, there seems quite a lot of evidence that that sits behind uh, a lot of the rise in populism that we've seen around the world. You know, so, uh, sits sitting behind perhaps in the UK, Brexit in uh, America, the rise of Donald Trump, uh, but in many other situations around the world. You might even argue that some of uh, Angela Merkel's current problems are to do with some of that populist backlash. So w one of the things I think then we have to say is that um, globalization has produced benefits for the world, but it's produced uh, tremendous challenges, uh, including ethical and social challenges for individuals, for firms, and for governments. Um, and, and a big part of this, I think, is uh, how do the in institutions around markets work to govern those markets, both inside countries and around the world? Um, and, and one very reasonable argument to make, I think, would be that where there's been adequate, inadequate regulation or weak regulation or, or regulation gaps, or regulatory institutions that are really on the just on the surface for legitimacy and not really being a, a no real rule of law, you see a great deal of what economists call rent-seeking behavior instead of value creation behavior. What, what does that mean? Well, it means that this is about people trying to grab a bigger slice of the cake for themselves rather than engaging in behaviors that by creating value make the cake bigger for everybody.